Dear students, once you have measured the molecular weight of a protein or a peptide using MS1, then you would want to score it, of course. And if your score does not give you a deterministic conclusion to which protein it is and the identity of the protein in the sample still remains unclear, then you can fragment that protein within the mass spectrometer's chamber and do another analysis. Such follow-up analyses are called tandem MS or MS followed by another MS. So let's take a look at what tandem MS can help you to do. So as I just mentioned, the intact proteins were measured using MS1 or the intact peptides as well and then they were uh, scored for the match with the database pr uh, proteins. However, if the identity was still unclear, then you can have this follow-up tandem MS step. Okay, for the tandem MS, what is very important here is that you need to fragment the protein. There are different strategies to fragment the proteins and peptides within the mass spectrometer's chamber and are very essential for tandem MS. You cannot have a tandem MS without fragmenting the peptides or the proteins that are already there after MS1 in the mass spectrometer's chamber. So towards this, you have to first fragment the protein and then measure their molecular weight as well. Let's take a look at this schema for tandem MS. So this is your protein or the mixture of proteins and you have different MS1s showing that there are four different proteins in the sample. All you did here was that you selected this MS1 peak or mass range for further analysis. So for further analysis, what you did was you injected it into the mass spectrometer's fragmentation chamber. And as you can see, multiple fragments were obtained from this protein. Now each fragment can be measured again using the detector and you will have multiple mass overcharge ratios arriving at your computer. The important thing to note here is that the fragmentation strategy that was employed was CID or collision induced dissociation as shown here in your textbook. Of course, if you have ECD or ETD, that is electron capture dissociation or electron transfer dissociation, then the type of ions will be different. Okay, so there is another important thing to note here is that unlike the mass select that occurred here, which helped us to select just one MS1 peak, you can also have the entire MS1 data set being transferred to the fragmentation chamber for onward analysis. Of course, this will be extremely complex as the data will be mixture of multiple precursor peptide and proteins. Okay, so once you have done 10 MMS, then you can arrive at the molecular weight of the peptides as well. Typically, this is called MS2. MS2 can be yielding peptides again and then you can take them into the fragmentation chamber yet again for fragmentation and thus you can arrive at MS3. And you can keep repeating this process n number of times where n is the length of the protein or peptide and the number of times it can be fragmented. The two important things to know and remember here are that you have to select the fragments mass range. So if there are multiple fragments, then you have to select which fragment you want to take for further analysis for fragmentation and MS2 and then so on and so forth. And secondly, you need to have the fragmentation chamber in order to fragment that protein or peptide.
Okay, to conclude, the 10 MMS helps you to measure the molecular weight of the peptides that may result from the fragmentation of your intact protein or peptide. This step will help in better identification of the proteins which were not being identified accurately through just the MS1 step. And this becomes very useful if your protein is a typical protein and has multiple homologs. Therefore, you can also identify specifically which homolog are you talking about in the sum.